Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. So you decided to play Raid, huh? Stop scaring them. You broke down and you're playing Raid Shadow Legends today. I'm going to give you a full beginner's guide here in 2024. Uh, what I want you guys to take away from this video is, A, there's a ton in this game now. Like, there's a ton. It is so overwhelming as a new player. So I want to spend some time in basically covering at least surface level everything in this game. Like, kind of going around clockwise, uh, clockwise I guess, and showing you every area uh, where you'll be spending the majority of your time, especially in the early game. We'll talk a little bit about the first champion that you should be investing in. My favorite part. And to kind of start your first team and your first priorities, kind of giving you a roadmap to the first few months of this game and maybe even a little bit beyond that in today's video as well. So, Silver Kishi here. I'm loving the videos. I'm really needed an updated in-depth beginner's guide as I'm brand new to the game. I've been playing for like a week. So this should be perfect for you, uh, Silver Kishi. So let's go ahead and jump into the game here, guys. Now, I am on my uh, main account. Some of the content in this game, uh, like the newest update, Cursed City, for example, it unlocks at level 52. So it's level gated as to not throw a ton at you right out the gate here. The biggest thing you want to kind of focus on when starting this game is taking your starting champion all the way to level 60, you know, fully ascended. We'll talk about what that all means, but that's kind of your first goal is getting one champion being all the way maxed out because in the beginning of this game after you you know go through the tutorial and stuff it can feel a overwhelming and b frankly it's kind of grindy it's kind of arduous in the beginning of this game because getting one champion to level 60 maxed out especially if you're free to play or not spending a lot of money it's going to take you a lot of time the good news is though is once you have one champion and then once you have a team with their all their masteries and all, all geared out which we'll talk about today it gets a lot easier Easier. like the more that you play the more that you invest and once you have a team you're able to access better gear and more efficiencies throughout the game as well all right so let's just take a little quick tour here it is january at the time of this recording so it's still the snow theme right now i apologize for you guys watching in the middle of the summer let's start at you know kind of the, the i guess the the settings menu right uh one thing you're going to want to do especially if you're playing on uh well if you're playing on it will change a little bit if your settings if you're playing on an iOS or Android or a computer with Plarium Play or BlueStacks. Uh, but the biggest thing you want to do is come in here to your graphic quality and your frame rate. If you can handle it, go 60 FPS or unlimited uh, because what this is going to do is allow you to actually run the game when you're auto farming and stuff, which we'll talk about in a bit. It's going to allow you to run it faster, actually, right? You're going to shave a lot of time by doing unlimited frame rate limit, depending on what of course your device can handle you can see your player id uh you know your language all the obvious stuff not a ton to look here at settings so let's just keep it moving here portal this is where we're going to be summoning. This is how you get champions inside the game. Now, there's a bunch of different types of shards. The most common shard is Mystery Shard. You can see I have 8,000 of them on my account, right? On Mystery Shards, if we pull up the, uh, you know, there's a lot of information in this game too. Odds are, if you have a question, it's somewhere in game, right? Sometimes you got to dig a little bit for it. But on the summoning chances, right, you can see Mystery Shards, we're pulling a lot of common and uncommon champions. There's a couple decent uncommon champions, uh, and maybe we'll mention them. I guess Armager uh, and I guess a couple others. Again, we'll mention them throughout the video, but for the most part, it's all about the rares, epics, legendaries. And now, last year in 2023, they introduced mythicals, not just champions, but also artifacts to the gear that we put on these champions, and that's ultra rare. You can see the odds. They routinely do events in this game, though. You can see kind of, I'm not sure if you can check it out. Remember, I am here to help. But yeah, the, the yellow uh that means there's a, a an extra uh chance or odds normally it's six now it's 12 percent, so 2x times to pull a legendary champion uh and in an in, in epic champion you get 88 percent on sacred shards right so sacred primal void ancient mystery all you really need to know is what you're going to be pulling from each right so on mysteries you know, we can pull them in clan versus clan tournaments or in champion summon events. We'll talk about all of this, not to overwhelm you guys. Uh, you can pull some rares there, you know, ideally, or we can just pull for points uh, in events and stuff like that. But they're not, not anything super special, but they're worth pulling in certain uh, times. Ancients, we're getting mostly rares. 
and they're kind of the cheapest of the more premium shards, I would say, right? Or the, the least valuable because odds are we're getting a rare. There's no commons or uncommons. Uh, we can have an 8% chance epic, 0.5% legendary, not great odds. That's why the biggest thing you want to take away from shards are you really want to wait to a double time event to be pulling your shards. You wanna get a 1% chance at a legendary. It doesn't sound like much, but it's double your rates, right? So you definitely wanna be holding, even the beginning of the game, ideally for a 2X event. Now the good news is, they do shard events all the time in this game. So you usually don't have to wait long, maybe a week or two, you know? Voids, you can only pull void affinity champions we'll talk about affinities in a minute okay but you can't pull you know there's four affinities there's magic spirit force and then void void are supposed to be a bit better they're certainly more expensive uh so it's a more premium uh shard uh the odds however are the same in terms of rarities you're just pulling a different type of champion primals those are your only shot at getting mythical champions okay they're ex incredibly scarce incredibly expensive mention it but don't mention it sacreds uh those are your best uh, chances at pulling a legendary you can see normally it's six percent today it's a 2x event it's a 12 percent okay uh and those are also very premium in the game uh there's fusions in the game, right? There's a permanent fusion. There's a couple permanent fusions. Broadmaw is one of them, and also Raz and Scarhide. Uh, they're both worth going for, you know? I don't think either of them are elite champions in the game, but they're both gonna help you out. Broadmaw is a reviver, and Raz and Scarhide, who I've already fused, you don't see him here. He's a pretty good control and debuffer for bosses and stuff like that, okay? On the re Remnant, something we don't have to discuss, that's kind of like more, you, you'll, you'll figure that out <laughs> down there. You'll see there's a lot of pop-ups in this game as well so get used to it guys get used to it remember the goal is to try and convince them so that's uh, that's all we have to talk about the portal right again the biggest takeaway there is wait hoard and then wait for special events otherwise you're just throwing them away your great hall okay your great hall there's two types of great hall okay they give you bonuses that are applicable everywhere in the game but you can only upgrade these bonuses through the arena, the classic arena, or PvP as we call it, right? So player versus player in the arena, which we'll get to in a bit, uh, this is how you know, you're getting these medals and you use these medals to upgrade these areas. Now, my great hall is done because I've been playing for five years, uh, but it's kind of a grind, but it's worth you know fighting in the arena for several reasons, and this is one of them. Uh, generally speaking, what do you prioritize here? Let me talk about what to prioritize and what not to prioritize in the Great Hall. Number one is accuracy, man. Accuracy is going to help you on like almost every champion, not almost every, but like a lot. 75% of champions roughly in this game require accuracy. In terms of accuracy, anytime you want to do anything to an enemy in this game, land a debuff, a decreased defense, decrease their turn meter, even things that might not be like decreasing turn meter, for example, I'm not landing a debuff, I'm stealing a buff, anything, it requires accuracy. Anytime you want to touch somebody other than just damage, it's going to require accuracy. So it's going to help you out tremendously, especially in the early game. It's kind of tough to get, okay? Uh, after accuracy, I like to go for HP percentage uh, or maybe crit damage, right? Uh, some people go for resist. I think all of those are fine, really. The one thing you don't really want to go for, and it's not going to ruin your account or anything, so if you've already done it, not the end of the world, but I would deprioritize attack percentage. Not that attack is not useful. It is useful. But only maybe 20%, 25% of champions in the game benefit from attack, right? Attack-based champions. Whereas every champion in the game benefits from defense and HP and accurate, well, not accuracy, but you know what I'm saying, but defense and HP. So in terms of the, you know, uh, these stats here, the defense attack and, 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 uh, and HP, excuse me, want to go with survivability, right? Because even nukers, we want to keep them alive. Uh, the area bonuses section, this is kind of a newer area of the Great Hall. And you can see I'm definitely not maxed out here. You can only upgrade this area vis-a-vis uh, -vis Live Arena, which isn't open to new players. Live Arena is real PvP, meaning it's real-time battle. It's very similar to an arena, but we do use like a draft system. So I pick a champion, you pick a champion. I pick a champion, you pick a champion. And we keep going until our teams are formed and then we ban one champion from the other team. Anyway, through playing in the Live Arena, 
we can upgrade our area bonuses, okay? And these are specific to certain areas, whereas the affinity bonuses are specific to affinity. I would probably start with magic affinity because the starting champions, Kale, Galek, we'll talk about them, Aethel and Elhane, uh, they're magic affinity, so might as well start with magic affinity, right? Area bonuses are specific to one area in the game. Uh, I like to focus on Hydra, uh, or Fire Knight, or and Fire Knight here. Uh, and I like to start focusing on speed first and foremost, followed by accuracy, maybe ignore defense after that. All right, let's move on to the tavern. So the tavern is where we're gonna be spending a lot of time. So this is my life. And I'm not gonna spend a ton of time in the tavern because I have a lot of content out there, but I'm gonna cover the basics, right? And we know there's gonna be probably a really big quality of life update for the tavern coming in 2024. So I don't want everything I say to be super irrelevant after that happens. But essentially in the tavern, this is where we're gonna be upgrading everything about our champions, right? Upgrade their level, upgrade their rank, upgrade their skills and ascend them. Yeah, it's a lot per champion. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on a champion and we'll quickly talk you through. Let me click on one that I don't have already maxed out and upgraded, right? And again, been playing a while, a lot of scrolling here. Okay, so we have Timmit the Fool, right? So first of all, he is five starred. And as I said in the beginning of the video, six star is, there's no seven star, right? We go six star, they're fully maxed out. So in order to, to get them to six stars, we're gonna be spending a lot of time in campaign, or we can even use these EXP brews. It's best to use a brew that's the same affinity as the actual champion. So see this little thing over here? This is force affinity. These are force affinity potions. They give us 18,000 experience. So we can upgrade them this way too. Now, if you don't have any potions or brews, I should say, in the beginning of the game, you're just gonna be using the campaign to farm up their levels, right? So let's go ahead and max them out here. Let's pretend that we get them all the way to 50. Now he's capped at level 50. You'll see the same thing on epics at level 40, right? He's capped here. So how can we get him to 60? Well, this is the vicious cycle of upgrading a champion in this game. You have to go to upgrade rank and you have to sacrifice other champions to upgrade this dude to level 60, right? So you can also use chickens and I have a lot saved up. I have a, a, a ton of chickens and feast and all this stuff. Essentially, these are equi equivalency of a rank five champion that I'm using, these chickens, right? So you'll get chickens of every rank on your account as well. In the beginning, you know, you'll get a few chickens, I think some earlier stage chickens and stuff like that. Basically, we use these dudes, they're called food, and I think that we also call, I don't think, we also call uh, champions that we're sacrificing, we, we refer to them as food too in this game, right? So chickens, sacrificing champions, upgrade, cost you a little silver, and boom, he's back at level one, and he's six starred. <laughs> so now we have to upgrade him all the way back to level 60. So what, now we can get him, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'll do it, who cares, right? So it costs almost a million silver, it's not cheap, but we can get him all the way to level 60. Now he's maxed out on his level. Okay, so we talked about levels. What are ranks, right? Well, rank again is how we're gonna be sacrificing other champions, crappy champions, champions that are common and uncommon to start out with that we pull from our mystery shards. Those aren't gonna be useless, they're gonna be our sacrificial lambs or food to upgrade champions that we really wanna to get to rank six. So that's the rank. That will allow you to get them to level 40, 50, and 60, and so on. Uh, skills. Every champion in this game has abilities. They have active skills and passive skills, right? So their first ability, there's no cooldown here, meaning that they can use this ability whenever they want to. And generally, the first abilities, they're kind of weak, right? On the second ability, there's a cooldown, right? So this says six turns. What does that mean? It means you can only use this ability once every six turns, but there's a way to get it down even more so we can use it more frequently. And that is where the upgrade skills comes into play. So all these things are legendary skill tomes. They're hard to get. I have 87 right now on my account. There's mythical skill tomes, there's epic skill tomes, there's rare skill tomes. You do want to use the rarity of skill tome on the champion that you're upgrading their skills, right? Meaning on Timit, this game will allow me to use mythical skill tomes to upgrade a legendary 
No, 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 no. We never want to do that. Same thing with legendaries on epics. Because one of the most scarce things inside this entire game are skill tomes. Specifically legendary and mythical. The dollar value, so to speak. I mean, we're looking at like over $20 on these mythicals each so when you get them either from events from you know it, who knows how they'll be added to the game we're still kind of in limbo and how we're going to get these things but legendary skill tomes for example from from clan boss right we want to be very careful and wise at when we're using these you want to look up a a champion more on that in just a moment okay so this is how we upgrade them right so let's go ahead and use a couple skill tomes and boom we can't choose which skill the skill tomes go to that's kind of a bummer. But hey, look at this. On his second ability that we just spoke about in his third ability, now it's a five turn cooldown because the skills went to these abilities, test your th strength, and now that reduces the cooldown so we can use it a little bit more frequently, okay? Uh, again, we don't wanna just go ahead and go crazy and skill up every legendary that we get. We wanna think about how much we're gonna be using them and kind of assess their power first. Ascension. Ascension is the last way to upgrade your champion. There's a lot of ways. These require potions. We'll talk about these potions more. Uh, you can mix potions too if you want to. So you can combine like lesser strength potions to get bigger ones. But you can mix these guys and eventually you'll ascend them, right? So what's happening when we ascend? Now his little star goes from gold to purple. So what does this mean? Well, we get a stat increase. We get access to new skills. We also have new gear that we can put on, new accessories the further that we were unlocking new accessory spots, right? The amulet and the banner, uh, once we get them to five and six star ascension. That's really important, especially in the beginning of the game. Let's say you go with Aethel as your starting champion or Kale, it doesn't matter who. We really wanna get them all the way to six stars. That way we can utilize the banner. The banner is a way to get a lot of accuracy. And we spoke about accuracy earlier. More on that when we talk about gearing though. All right, so that's the tavern, guys. Everything you need to do to upgrade a, a champion in this game, it's right there in the tavern for you, okay? The Guardian Ring. The Guardian Ring is a way to power up your champions uh, inside the game. And there's di different ways we can do that. It all revolves around duplicate champions, right? Uh, so let's talk about the this area. Uh, well, Sparring Pit, you know, this is an area where you can earn like passive experience, right? So you can just throw a couple champions in here, boom. And all of a sudden they're in the Sparring Pit. You can see you can upgrade it to get some experience per hour. It's not a game changer in terms of the amount experience. It goes slow, but it does add up over time. So it's advantageous to use the sparring pit, right? Faction Guardians. Uh, here is where we use our duplicate champions to get stat bonuses from the faction. More on what a faction is and all that stuff in a moment. At the end of the video, you'll understand everything. <laughs> but basically, we use our duplicates. So, you know, let me see if I have any new. Well, do I have any rare duplicates here? Let's see. Yeah, I do. So boom, boom. We go here. We select them confirm and boom i have 10 percent hp on rare banner lord champions on my account because we did that so these champions kind of stay there and we get stats across the game okay uh that should be a priority for you guys to go ahead and use your duplicates to get these stats it doesn't mean you can't use them in battle or anything like that it's not like holding their spot or you know you just can't get rid of them uh but it's essentially you're going to keep these duplicates to get stats okay empower champions you're not going to be doing a lot of this in the early game so not not super important to remember every detail here but essentially we want to go ahead and take a champion we want to empower them well we don't want to but you can decide to do so you can empower use a duplicate legendary or mythical only at the time of this recording you can unlock them and you can get a stat boost by sacrificing one champion into another champion, okay? Uh, unbinding, you don't wanna be doing that. That's sacrificing a champion totally. Wait till you understand the game more and have a really firm grasp on your account and all the champions before you unbind anybody. Token Trader, you can purchase champions with unbinded legendaries that you essentially sacrificed, uh, but it costs a lot, right? And uh, just don't focus on that right now. That's the Guardian Ring. You can see a lot of pop-ups. Did I tell you the pop-ups? Every time we leave an area, uh, pop-ups. The market right now is really trash in this game. I would not advise you guys spend a lot of time in the market. I wouldn't even pay to refresh the market. Save your gems. That's really all I have to say about the market right now. It badly, badly needs an update. All this stuff is trash, right? 
a mystery shard, yay. The one thing I will say, which I just demonstrated is, if you wanna buy a mystery shard or whatever from the market, routinely once in a while they'll have an ancient shard which is generally worth it too you can do your you have like a daily quest right so you can buy one item if you'd like to uh you know a lot of players do that get a five arena uh plays basically tokens the gem mine the gem mine is where you passively gain gems now if you think you're going to be playing this game for any amount of time i would recommend everybody totally maxes out your gem mine that way you can have the most production. And therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. There's only three levels. It's not a massive priority, but eventually you want to get to level three, okay? And the longer you play, obviously, the more it will yield in terms of dividends, right? For your, for your initial cost. All right, so we covered uh, Altar of Souls. Soul Stones. Oh, I said there was a few ways to upgrade your uh, champions. We talked about ascension. We talked about ranks. We talked about levels. We talked about skills and how to get them. But now they added last or two years ago. I don't know. Kind of a well, big update in the game was awakening. Awakening. Okay. That's different from ascension. You do that in the soul stone summon area, AKA the altar of souls. So what does this mean? You'll be getting soul stones occasionally. I have none right now. There's a dungeon called the iron twins. You don't have to remember all this. Don't worry about it. We'll go through the dungeons in a moment too. But essentially you come in here, you summon, it's kind of like pulling shards, right? You summon more soul stones and then you get all these, these champions, you, you know, these champions with different little stars on them. Those are the amount of stars you'll awaken them. Once you awaken them, you get to choose a blessing for your champion. You don't have to worry about this in the early game. I don't think it's even unlocked in the early game, but eventually you get these, you know, these blessings and they can give you stat bonuses and they can give you special abilities. We'll talk more about blessings in a bit, but that's basically what you need to know about the altar of souls right now. Uh, the biggest area really is the summoning area. And then the rest is pretty intuitive after you spend like five minutes here, right? You'll see your collection. You'll see that you can sell your collection. The bummer about souls in this game though, the bummer is you can pull any champion in the game, even champions that you don't have, right? So it's kinda, it's kinda meh. Now I would recommend you guys save your resources and not blow them all on mortal soul stones. Like you get coins from sacrificing like I just did. I would save some of them. That way the soul merchant is an area where you can kind of buy souls. But again, you don't have to worry about all this stuff right now. I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys. Don't stress it. I think that's more of a, a mid to end game type area, right? Altar of souls. All right, Forge, the last area on the main screen here, right? Or the Bastion. Forge has some of the best artifact sets in the game. Now in the very beginning of the game, Probably not going to be doing a lot of forging, but let me just point out one thing that you're going to want to start being aware of out the gate. Doing faction wars, which we'll get to in a moment, that's like one of the areas we can actually play in this game. So far, we've been talking about kind of the back end, the administrative side of Raid Shadow Legends, so to speak, right? But eventually, you're going to be getting like forge materials through various areas of the game, right? They give you different things for different sets. There's a forge pass that you can pay for every month to give you, you know, uh, different little quests to give you artifact material for the forge, right? Uh, there's Cursed City, there's Doom Tower. There's so many areas in the game that gives you some of these materials that you need to for to forge really good gear right so this gear all of this not all of them but most of them in the forge are considered some of the best sets in the game so you are going to want to pay attention to this eventually perception is probably the best two-piece set in the game arguably right depends on what you need of course but perception gives you accuracy which we've already spoken about and speed Speed and accuracy are two of the most important stats in the game. And see this number two over here and the number four? That's how many artifact pieces you need on your, your character to get that bonus. So we can have up to six pieces uh, per character, right? So we can, that means we can have three sets of perception. That means we can get 15% speed and 120 accuracy on a champion with three perception sets on them. That's really powerful. So how do we get this gear? We play in the arena, which we already talked about as it pertained to the Great Hall. And we also play in Faction Wars. 
So arena and faction wars should be a focus even in early on for you guys. So that's something you should be doing. That way you get more material to farm perception gear, which will help you out tremendously in this game. So there's also like rank charms and rarity charms. It just makes your gear a little bit better, right? Rank and rarity. We'll get to that when we talk about gear, but here we go. We have a legendary piece of gear. It's yellow. Oh, this is actually really good. Boots, speed boots very good in this game so we're definitely going to keep that you can choose to sell some gear i'm not going to go through it all with you guys right now we're just going to collect it and we're going to move on that's the forge okay you can see by the way last thing on the forge is you can see where each of these materials where you need to go to get them just by clicking on them or tapping them right and it will tell you okay you need to fight in the classic arena to get this material and a lot of the materials can be used with different set multiple sets it's not like everything's totally unique right uh okay let's keep it moving here we've done the bastion let's talk about dungeons yeah uh, by the way, there's quests in this game, uh, there's a storyline in this game, there's passes in this game, there are clans in this game, there are clan quests in this game, there's clan shop in this game, there's a lot more that we're not going to deep dive into everything because we'd be here for two hours. This is an in-depth guide, but it's not going to be a guide where you need to uh, <laughs> come back and revisit on multiple viewings, hopefully. Uh, Join a clan as soon as possible. Look for a clan that's obviously, hopefully, nice dudes and gals, right? Uh, I think for me, that's the biggest thing. Like, I want a nice culture. Not like there's a lot to complain about in this game. I'm not gonna lie, right? But I, I'm not a fan of people who are just complaining all the time or toxic. So that's what I look for first and foremost. A good group of players. But practically, strategically, you do want to look for a clan that's around the same level as you. Because as a clan, you fight the clan bosses together. So you want to find some... You don't want to be a new player joining an endgame clan. It's not going to work, man. You're not going to be able to contribute. And it's just going to be pointless. They're not going to want you anyway, right? You kind of want to grow together as a clan, right? So just try to find a, a beginner clan that it's active activity is important and i like you know i like the vibes i like a nice little culture too right i'm lucky to have both in my clan all right let's uh moving on more packs yay uh a little ridiculous i will say with the packs in this game like too much pop-ups i am just not not gonna lie to you guys uh really quickly the index is where we can actually find it's kind of like the gallery this is where you can find all the champions in the game. They're sorted by their factions and they're sorted by their rarity, right? So uncommons, rares, uh, epics, and legendaries. You'll see that when you get a character in this game, when you get a champion, uh, they become light. When you don't have them, like there's only one that I don't have here in High Elves, like Insulin, uh, they're kind of darkened out, right? So this is just so you can check out every every champion inside the game, right? Oh, and you can see the mythicals are at the very top here too as well. Now, all these factions, well... These are factions, right? These are all the factions in the game at the time of this recording. There's Banner Lords, High Elves, Sacred Order, Barbarians, and you guys can read the rest. The newest are at the bottom. So Sylvan Watchers, Shadowkin, those are two new-ish, like two years, one year uh, factions inside the game at the time of this recording. More pop-ups, great. I'm gonna text you the details of a bank account. All right, let me talk you through all the areas inside the game here briefly, and then we'll talk about champions and how to gear them. And then I'll give you recommendations on which champions to start out with, which champions to invest in, okay? So let's start with the campaign. This is where you're going to be spending the majority of your time in the early game. I'd advise you guys to, you know, there's different uh, difficulties. Start out on normal. Obviously, you're going to get all the way to Nightmare eventually, right? Uh, I would advise you guys to just make progress in the campaign. It's not too hard. You're going to want a campaign farmer. Because as we spoke about, we need to level up the rest of the champions on our account to sacrifice to rank up other champions on your account, right? So we need a campaign farmer. So this is how it works, right? Ideally, we want to get to stage 12, right? Stage 12. It doesn't, the difficulty doesn't really matter. Eventually, 12, 3, and brutal is the best place to farm experience right uh but in the beginning normal or hard is, is going to be fine as well right i think this is a good place uh so 12 3 we say 12 3 farm like stage 3 not stage 7 because a stage 7 is a boss stage it kind of goes a little bit slower and shields you can see i get weapons on stage one i get helmets on stage two i get shields on stage three not because we want the shields we don't want the shields 
because we want to sell the shields. Shields, for whatever reason, sell for a little bit more. That's why people advise you to farm on stage three. Now, you can also see miscellaneous drops in each area of the game, right? These are going to be champions that you'll just get through farming the campaign, okay? I do want to point out probably the most important uh, champion for everybody, and that's going to be War Maiden. So War Maiden is a random drop in the Dreadlands, which is stage nine. So War Maiden is one of the best rares in the game, and she's a debuffer who brings decreased defense. So after you're starting champion, you do want to invest in War Maiden. I guess I'll tell you right now the champions to invest in. Want to get War Maiden? You want to upgrade War Maiden. We'll tell you how to build her in a moment. Uh, but War Maiden, Kale, whoever you're going with as your starter, I think Galek's the worst of the stars, but you really can't go wrong. I like Kale, maybe number one, Aethel number two, Elhane number three, and Galek number four. Whoever you go with, you want to pair them with a War Maiden, and then 30 days in, you get High Katoon, okay? Those should be like your three focuses in your first month of Raid Shadow Legends, in my opinion. Again, you're not going to ruin your account if you don't focus on them, but they're all really good. And all three of them are worth taking all the way to level 60, okay? Not every champion in this game do you have to take to level 60. For example, on stage 12, Diabolus, she's pretty dang good. But I wouldn't advise you guys take her to level 60 because it takes a lot of resources and a lot of time to get a champion to level 60, right? Now, you're going to pull other good champions along the way. So maybe if you pull like an insanely OP legendary on your first week or something, yeah, obviously invest in that champion too. Either way, I digress. This is where we're going to campaign farm, right? Now, to farm campaign... We'll have a campaign farmer. This dude name is Fellhound. He's a void. You can see the little triangle there. That's a void affinity, void shards, void affinity, right? He has an AOE attack, attack all enemies on his first ability. That means like we spoke about earlier, there's no cooldown there. That means he's one of the best campaign farmers in the game if not the best fast animations it's beautiful right so this is how you campaign farm it's not too exciting guys you only put one champion your campaign farmer this could be kale this could be Aethel. this could be elhane could be galek your starting champion at the beginning right you want to put them in there and then put food in there right now painkeeper is probably not a good example because she's really good uh but let's just put this champion confessor is that her name yes three confessors with a fell hound she's level one we're just going to keep farming this over and over again. And you can do auto battles. You don't have to sit there and watch it every time. We're just going to, again, just in the beginning, it's going to be easy difficulty. We're going to go through it and everybody's going to get experience. Eh? That's it. <laughs> Excuse me. Get some rest. See this thing over here? XP boosts. Whenever you're going to be spending a lot of time farming up food or farming up your main champions that you want to level up, you really want to make sure that you're getting an XP boost activated. You can get them in the shop. You can get them with diamonds. There are various ways to get that XP boost in Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, but you really, when you're going to be spending a lot of energy, everything, not everything, but most of what you do, like 3,593, 95, excuse me, right now, is going to cost me eight to farm again, right? So we want to make sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck for our energy. So getting an XP boost and using an XP boost is going to be very important there. So eventually we're going to farm these up until it says max level, right? We're not going to be able to farm them up anymore. Then we can rank them up and then we can sacrifice them to rank up more. You guys, it's kind of like a big Ponzi scheme here to upgrade a champion in Raid Shadow Legends, you know? Hopefully you guys understand that. Going back to the map here too, one thing to talk about here is these are positions. You know, these, these, uh, I have a whole video up there. You can, you can, uh, YouTube search, uh, Ash Raid Shadow Legends positions, and we'll get really in depth with why it matters where you're putting your champion in these four positions or five or six, depending on where you are in the game. Suffice it to say, you should be aware that it does matter in, in significant ways where you're putting a champion. But the only maxed out champion that should be here on the team is going to be this dude, your campaign farmer, okay? Now, when you're progressing, you'll have normal champions. But when you're farming, you just want one farmer. Now, if I had two champions up right now when I'm farming, right? Let's just say I want to be level one food champion. It's The, the experience here is going to be split 50-50. Now, I can't use any experience on Fellhound. He's already maxed. So it would be a waste of energy if I was to split all my experience 50-50. That's why we always recommend you always farm with four champions, not just one. 
That way we can go 25%, 25%. We're utilizing 75% of our total experience, okay? All right, let's move it on. That's campaign. Uh, again, you'll be focusing a lot on campaign. I'm gonna do dungeons last because there's a lot there. Faction Wars, you'll be focusing on this right away, right? Faction Wars, every faction in the game, we talked about this when we looked at the gallery of, uh, of all the champions, right? Every faction in the game is gonna have an area where you can only use champions of that faction and you fight against the red boss, right? So you can use these uh, these factions. You do want to progress in Faction Wars. The cool thing about Faction Wars is you can get utility out of champions without having them maxed out. Don't feel like you have to max out every champion. Faction Wars are very important. They give you glyphs, which we'll talk about when we talk about gear, and they're just generally really good. They give you uh, forging material. You can see the material drops here as well. And it's something that, it's it, it, at least to me, it can be kind of fun to have restrictions in this game. It allows you to play with champions you normally wouldn't have. Eventually, you will finish all of these factions if you play long enough. Trust me, you'll get there, you really will. And you will get your hands on Lydia the Death Siren. Lydia the Death Siren is one of the best champions in the game. So it's not gonna be easy and it's gonna take you a while, but it's it's good to already out the gate be focused on faction wars, not just for the glyphs or the artifact materials, but to make your progress towards Lydia the Death Siren, okay? So those are faction wars, start those right away. All right, we have the arena. We talked about the arena. There's three areas of the arena, classic arena. This is where we fight and uh, we upgrade our, our, our great hall, like we said. So uh, really important to not neglect the arena. We can also use them for the forge. We get forge materials here as well. And it's fun, right? These are against other real players for the most part. There are some bots in the game, but as you progress, there's less and less bots. And what you can see is, is we get all these rewards for each victory, right? One of them is that Magisteel that we looked at earlier in the forge, right? Uh, so important to focus on the arena don't worry about wins and losses that much losing in the arena not the end of the world we're given these tokens right classic arena tokens and that's what it costs to engage in arena battle they're replenished every day use your tokens don't be afraid of matches it's not life or death these are real people that we're going against like farty 777 what up farty Oops. <laughs> I farted. <laughs> and uh, if they're real people, but they're just setting their defenses. And you can do the same to set your defense, right? You can see tiers. You can see top players. You can see the bonuses. The further you go, obviously, the bonuses are a bit better. All right. Live Arena. Live Arena is, we already spoke about it a little bit. It does, it's not going to open to you guys right away, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. This is where you can fight people in real time, like 1v1, and they're actually there playing you in real life at the same time, right? That's where you draft and ban and stuff like that. Tag team arena. This is where you use three arena teams, right? So we're using 12 champions per battle uh, against three other set defenses. This is not a real time arena battle. This is most people's like least favorite area of the game. It gets a lot of flack in Raid Shadow Legends, like, oh, tag team arena sucks. Uh, a few people like it out there, just a couple, but it is worth putting time into, uh, you know, after you actually are able to build three teams. So it's not going to be in your first month or so of the game, uh, but it's worth putting time into because of this thing at the bottom called the Bazaar. I'm kind of standing in front of it right now, uh, but you can buy rare skill tomes ancient shards xp brews energy we've talked about all the chickens we've talked about all these things you guys should know what all these are by now uh but also champion fragments this dude in particular drekstar blood twin is very good so you can buy fragments where eventually you'll be able to summon the entire champion through the summoning portal, right? And as you progress, you can get your hands on uh, more scarce or, or valuable resources as well. But you have to be in the tier to be able to buy the items in the tier. They're kind of gate kept, which is kind of a bummer. All right, those are the arena. That's considered PvP in the game. Clan bosses, the old school demon lord. This dude, Demon Lord, has been in the game since the beginning of the game. You set a team and you fight the Demon Lord, right? In the beginning, you're just gonna be using the champions that you have. Generally speaking, poison is very good against clan boss. So Kale is very good or other poisoners that you get your hands on. However, I would avoid investing in a champion called Yaga the Insatiable. I would not upgrade him. I would not invest in him. The reason I mentioned that is because they give him to you around day 15. He's not good. He's a waste of resources. He's an epic champion. Other than that, though, invest in poisoners 
increase defense champions and just start on the easy and the normal and kind of get your feel once you start progressing in a uh, clan boss right uh, where you work as a clan to beat this dude to be to kill this boss and then you get chests what are in the chests all kinds of the most scarce rewards in the game especially when you go up to up in difficulty right for example sacred charge legend legendary skill tomes right these are the most difficult things to get in the game and that's how you get them through beating the clan boss every day right with your clan you beat them together uh and eventually everybody out there right now you want to i'm going to give you a few websites right now for you guys i'm going to give you three most important raid shadow legends websites to use as resources and tools on your raid journey the first one's going to be deadwoodjedi.com that's deadwoodjedi.com they have all the speed tunes and all the popular uh clan boss teams inside you know basically the game and they're going to give you the correct speeds and gears and difficulty levels all the good stuff that you need to build these teams right also deadwood jedi the guy who owns this website has a great clan boss youtube channel that you guys should go ahead and check out as well the other website just while we're here is hellhades.com right Hellhades.com is great for champion kind of guides, how to build them. I also have a web, uh, a YouTube channel, excuse me, called Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guides, where I host a new champion guide every day in addition to this YouTube channel, if you want to check that out. But anyway, back to Hell Hades. there's articles and just all kinds of good stuff, right? Let me pull up a, uh, let me pull up like a champion or something. I don't know, champion tier list. Sure, there's a whole champion tier list. You can take a look at the best champions. They give an overview of the champions. They give ratings everywhere in the game of champions. They give their multipliers, their damage, everything you need to know. They even help you with building their masteries, and we'll get to all this stuff in a bit. Uh, but their their blessings, a lot of stuff that we didn't cover, it's all on hellhades.com. The last one is Ayumi Love. AyumiLove.net. That's A Y U M I love.net uh they, it's similar to a hellhades.com the thing with the yumi love is they have patch notes and kind of a little bit more on the uh a little less flashy in terms of a UI perspective, uh, but you're getting a lot of the same in terms of that really good information regarding guides and stuff like that. Both Hell Hades and Ayumi Love also have YouTube channels if you want to check them out. There's also the Hell Hades Gaming Network YouTube channel. So there's a lot of content out there to help you guys out in raid. So yeah, we talked about joining a clan to fight the clan boss together. The other clan boss is Hydra clan boss. This other one will be getting sometime, maybe in the next year, we'll see. Uh, but this Hydra clan boss, we don't have to get in detail uh, with Hydra right now because it's the newer of the clan bosses. There's also a Hydra clash where you fight against other clans based on the total damage that you do. But Hydra is more of an advanced clan boss. You don't have to worry about that in the early, early game, but eventually you do wanna form a team to fight the Hydra. Uh, there's different, you can kinda, let me just go in here and give you a quick look at it we're using six champions on hydra clan boss six champions so it's the only area in the game where we have to use six all in one battle so here's all the hydra heads we go in there we do a certain amount of damage and then all of the damage as a clan gets added up and we get certain rewards based on our damage okay so it's pretty intuitive just in the early game again once you unlock hydra you're kind of just you're kind of just messing around anyway with the champions that you have. You're kind of limited, right? But eventually, you can really get in depth in the strategy here. All right, we have Doom Tower. Doom Tower was the biggest update in the game before Curse City. Doom Tower is a big, well, tower, <laughs> and it has two difficulties: hard and normal. Two things to point out about Doom Tower: there are three types of 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 content or dungeon or whatever you want to call it in Doom Tower. You have a floor. Right, so a floor is just three waves against just, you know, other champions, enemy champions, and that's it. There's no boss or anything like that. Our team goes, I have it on auto right now, but you can also manual it, just manually select your champion's abilities. And I would advise all of you guys, in the early game, just read what the champions do. Some of it you're not gonna understand, but eventually, same thing with Masteries, which we'll get to in a moment here, eventually you'll understand you'll start to pick it up over time right don't be overwhelmed don't pressure yourself but actually read what they're doing so you can kind of understand how debuffs work and everything like that again we'll cover that uh in a moment here but read what they do so those are the floors right it goes all the way to floor 120 
Then they have secret rooms, SR. Secret rooms aren't very secret. They're visible by everybody. <laughs> but there's restrictions, epic champions only. Now, by farming secret rooms, we can get forge material, you know, more stuff to forge more cool artifacts, right? Which we put on our champions as gear. Uh, but we can also get fragments of exclusive Doom Tower champions. Now, Doom Tower normal, which you're going to start on, obviously not hard, but normal difficulty, uh, the first few champions that we get are actually really good. Archmage Helmet, then eventually Ryan the Conjurer, and then eventually Dark, uh, Dark Kale. All of them are really, really good. So we should focus on Doom Tower. Might not be your top priority, but it shouldn't be something you neglect for super, super long. The last thing I'll point out is the bosses, right? Magma Dragon. Every 10 floors, there's a boss. Nether Spider. And there's different rotations with different bosses. I don't have to go super uh, in-depth on the detail. There's a lot of Doom Tower strategy guys for each of these bosses. Suffice it to say, we're getting valuable for material here inside or from attacking all of these bosses basically right and then eventually hopefully we get all the way up to the tippity top of the tower and we collect rewards along the way that's doom tower right nice and easy Cursed City is the newest update in the game right now, and it's divided into a bunch of different areas, right? Cursed City also is heavy on the restrictions, right? Certain affinities, certain factions uh, are going to be used in different stages. It gets more challenging as you go. It's like a big map. You can kind of choose your own adventure, but the routes all lead the same way. It's going to rotate every season. There's double bosses in this area, so you'll go against like two bosses at the same time. Cursed City, though, doesn't open open up until you're level 52 so you don't have to worry about curse city but here's just a little preview of going against uh, two bosses and what it looks like right so why do we play curse city it has its own rewards has its own special artifact sets that are very powerful as well and just for the fun of it right there's a lot of fun uh battles in curse city all right guys let's go to the dungeons now campaign faction wars arena and dungeons like these four first four and i guess a little clan boss once you find a clan are going to be where you're spending the majority of your time Time. Now, I'm not going to get into every single dungeon and what they're there for, but let's break it down by area, like, of what we're doing. There's two, Sand Devil and Phantom Shogun. They're kind of more advanced dungeons. This is where you can ascend your artifacts and make them even more powerful. You don't have to worry about that in the very beginning of the game. Uh, Dragon's Lair, Ice Golem Peak, Spider's Den, and Fire Knight's Castle. These are the four traditional dungeons with their own bosses, Ice Golem, Spider, Dragon, and Fire Knight, right? They're all different and they all, uh, they all necessitate using different champions with different mechanics and tools that they bring to the table, right? Uh, so we, we fight these bosses at higher and higher difficulties and we farm these gear. Dragon's Lair is usually one of the, the, the earlier and easier dungeons, right? And you get your hands on accuracy and speed gear, both very valuable, right? Speed gives you speed, accuracy gives you accuracy. That's amazing. That's amazing news. <laughs> All right, Spider's Den is where you farm accessories. It's also the best place in the game to farm silver, okay? Because selling accessories gives you a lot of silver. Everything in this damn game costs silver, right? You need to upgrade gear. You need to summon more champions. So you're going to be spending a lot of time, probably the majority of your time, you know, over the years in Spider's Den. You can get your rings, your amulets, and your banners from Spider's Den. That's the only area where we can farm accessories in the entire game. More on what accessories are in a moment. Minotaur's Labyrinth is where you farm masteries. More on what masteries are in a moment. We're getting there. And then these are all the potion keeps. These arcane keep, spirit, magic, force, void. These are where you're getting those potions uh, we talked about earlier to ascend your champions inside the tavern, okay? So we go against the appropriate, you know, uh, the appropriate faction, or excuse me, affinity uh, to get those those uh, brews. So it's a good time to mention the affinity matchups in this game. Magic is powerful against spirit, but weak against force. Spirit is powerful against force, but weak against magic. And force is powerful against magic, and weak against spirit. So if you have an affinity, mat and void is neutral to everybody. No advantages, no disadvantages, right? If you have a disadvantage, you might land weak hits, you might not land debuffs, all kinds of crap, right? 
if you have an advantage, so if I'm a magic attacking a spirit, I'll have a better chance at landing uh, strong hits and getting more damage and landing my debuffs, okay? Uh, Arcane Keep is where you get like the general potions, arcane potions, which everybody requires. Iron Twins is where, as I mentioned earlier, this is where we get the materials that we need to get the soul stones. Remember the soul stones to awaken and unlock blessings? That's the dungeon that we do that. Okay, let's go to the actual champions, right? I think this is the last thing that we're gonna cover in today's video. I'll have timestamps, probably a bad time, 50 minutes in to mention that we'll have timestamps here. This is a champion, Foley. We're looking at you, might as well stay with Foley. So we talked about how to upgrade the actual champions in the tavern. But if we just click on the champion tab, right? We can see all our champions with all their gear on and how far we have them upgraded. Now Foley is not only fully to level 60, not only is he fully ascended, but he's also fully awakened too. So he's a fully maxed out Foley. <laughs> and he's plus four. That means he's fully empowered. Back at the uh, Guardian Ring, we talked about empowering champions using duplicates to make them stronger. They can go all the way to level four. Plus four means he's fully empowered. All right. We can see skins here for champions. We can see the champion lore on all these champions. If you're into the lore, a lot, most of the champions now, especially legendaries and epics, do have lore inside this game. Uh, we can notate different builds, kind of tagging the champions if we have duplicates and stuff like that. Uh, and we can go right to the tavern to upgrade them here too. We can also see reviews. Uh, reviews are, are generally fairly accurate, but not always. It's much better to go to websites uh, hellhades.com or Ayumi Love to get more accurate reviews and ratings on champions that you pull because you never do. People are inherently biased usually for champions that they already have, right? So the reviews are always a little bit off in game. Moreover, some champions have bad reviews that the majority of the player base, maybe casual players or whatever, just haven't found all the use cases for them and they might excel in some areas of the game, right? Uh, Okay, I would never, by the way, ever, ever, ever look at recommended artifacts. It's all bad, 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 okay? So here, these, these three rows right over here, guys, these are our accessories. We get them from Spider. We get the ring, we get the amulet, and we get the banner, okay? Now, the, ring, the amulet, excuse me, the ring is available, uh, is it right away? I think at, at three... Ah, when is the ring available? Let me see. The ring is available. This position unlocks so you can wear a ring, right? Which gives you valuable stats, obviously, at four star ascension, okay? Five star unlocks the amulet and six star unlocks the banner. The banner we really want, especially on our kale, our starter, whoever it is, that way we can put accuracy on there. That's one of the best sources to get accuracy on your champions, okay? Now, these positions, well, obviously, there's a weapon, a helmet, a shield, gauntlets, chest piece, and boots. Now, I don't want to get too granular here and, you know, confuse anybody, but the top row, so the bottom row, we farm in spider, right? All this stuff we farm in regular dungeons or we get from the forge, okay? The top row, they can only be, the main stack can only be one thing, right? So a weapon is always going to be attack. A helmet is always going to be HP as the stat. A shield is always going to be defense. But these gauntlets, the chest and the boots, they can always be a different main stat, right? So for example, as I just said, attack, this is a main stat up here. Attack, how HP, and defense, just like I said but these can be different. The gauntlets can be crit damage, percentage, HP percentage, HP flat stat. Generally in this game, percentages are better than flat stats, okay? Just to prove, just to kind of walk you through the end, for the people in the back here, HP percentage, HP flat stat, HP percentage, HP flat stat. The chest can have percentage, the helmet cannot. We want percentages. So on our chest piece, we want an HP percentage, an attack percentage, a defense percentage. We want percentage of stats, right? On the boots, this is the only artifact, the only thing that we can put on our champions the entire game where we can get speed as the main stat. So speed is not a percentage, it's a flat stat, 
but there is no such thing as speed percentage in this game, right? Speed main stat should be what you're putting on all of your champion's boots, especially in the early game. There's some more advanced builds as you play this game for months and months and months and years where you can change things up a little bit, but everybody should have speed. It's very important. A lot of new players do not build enough speed on their champions and they suffer because of it. They're not unable to progress. Speed on boots. Take anything away from this. Gauntlets on anybody who's doing damage on your team. Any of your starting champions, your campaign farmer, anybody who's doing damage. We want crit rate or crit damage. Basically, we want 100% crit rate. And the easiest place to get it is from the gauntlets. This is where you can get crit rate percentage and crit damage percentage, okay? Now on our supports and our revivers, we'll take HP percentage or defense percentage, make them stronger, more survivability on them. That's good, right? A common mistake in this game, the three most common mistakes for gearing, not speed on the boots, flat stats, right? Going flat stats on the chest, for example, or on the gauntlets, and not having enough survivability on everybody on your team. So, you know, what good is it having a nuker with a ton of attack if they're dying all the time, right? And not building your nukers with 100% crit rate. First priority is anybody who's doing damage, again, all your starting champions, right? War Maiden, Kale, Galek, Aethel, Elhane, we want them to have 100% crit rate. That way they're always landing critical hits, okay? Now, if they're bringing debuffs to the table, let me find a debuffer, Lydia the Death Siren, for example, right? She's bringing a debuff called Decrease Defense. Decrease Defense and Weaken are the two kind of fundamental damage debuffs in the game. Increase Defense and Strengthen are kind of the fundamental uh, survivability buffs in this game. There's a lot more in terms of buffs and debuffs, and I have a video going over all of them, but I'm gonna kind of not go over all of them right in today's video. But to do any of this stuff, to land this stuff, we need accuracy. So the best source of accuracy is, as we spoke about, the banner. That's why getting a champion to six star, is gonna be important, uh, Ascension. That way we can unlock that banner, okay? So that's everything gear-wise. Skills, we already talked about. Uh, you, can, you can book them up in the tavern to, uh, to get bit more out of their skills, right? Decrease the cooldown. Generally, what makes a champion worth putting books into and upgrading their skills is getting that cooldown. We wanna look for cooldowns. We wanna look for getting the buff and debuff percentages up. 75% chance of placing a debuff. Nah, I wanted 100. So it's important to book in those situations, right? Masteries. Remember how I said earlier that Miniatures Labyrinth is where we farm our masteries? This is where we can upgrade or we can pay 800 gems if you're a dirty spender, right? This is where we unlock our masteries. It's important on masteries to read what they do. Deadly precision, crit rate plus 5%. Keen strike, crit damage plus 10%. Every mastery is pretty intuitive. Lasting gifts, 30% chance to extend the duration of any buff cast by this champion. Read masteries, they can be over, every new player says the same thing, like there's so much to learn, it's so overwhelming. Just read them and think about what, what type of champion you're building and what they're doing, what they do in their skills. And it will be kind of intuitive, but you can always use hellhades.com or my champion guy YouTube channel or a Yumi Love to give you recommendations on masteries for champions as well, okay? Uh, so we get to choose two out of three, offense, defense, support. A lot of champions, we go offense, but it really does depend. And there's different builds and different ways to utilize each champion in this game. It's really the fun of Raid Shadow Legends. There's no right or wrong way to build any specific champion. There are popular and recommended ways, but there's always niche, niche situations where we can utilize different artifact sets and different stats to our advantage, right? The last thing that I'll mention is artifact sets. I mentioned about uh, farming like the dragon earlier, when I mentioned speed gear and accuracy gear, right? This is because we're wearing those two-piece sets. We have two accuracy sets on. Accuracy, accuracy. So we get the bonus, 40 extra accuracy, right? We have a divine speed here. We get divine speed, two-piece artifact set, speed plus 12%. HP plus or HP shield for three turns. So, you know, it becomes pretty intuitive. You can kind of see the sets and what they do. Set, I would say stats before sets, especially in the early game. 
Don't stress yourself out feeling like you have to get perfect sets on every champion. Just stay with the fundamentals in terms of how to build them. Crit rate, survivability, percentage, not flat stat, everything that we spoke about, and you're going to be okay. The sets will intuitively, you'll just learn them over time. So guys, I feel like this is a good time to wrap the video. It's been an hour. Hopefully you've enjoyed this long in-depth guide of Raid Shadow Legends. I think that, you know, I just did this with no cuts. I just kind of had no notes. I just kind of took you through the game. So hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to respond to as many comments as I can here. Uh, and again, there'll be timestamps if you want to revisit anything that we spoke about in today's video. Good luck on your raid journey. I invite you to subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you want some more beginner content, I'll be sprinkling it in throughout the year. As a matter of fact, I do have a guide going out, I think, you know, in a week or two on all of the login champions every day you get a little reward for logging in some of those logins are going to be champions i'll teach you guys how to build them and what type of artifacts and artifact sets to put on them to get the most utility out of them anyway guys i digress thank you for watching and as always take care guys